Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to replace the pressure switch on our well on the farm side of our property. So this Square D pressure switch has been giving us trouble since really day one we installed it. This is the unit, the switch that came with this pump and big issue with it is it just keeps short cycling. So we've already replaced the contacts, you can see in this video twice, where when they're short circuiting, it's ending up corroding effectively or pitting the surfaces of the contacts and then eventually what happens is they'll stick together and you end up not having well not having water because power is not going to the unit and you have to come out and manually separate those contacts it's bad for the well the pump itself when this is short cycling so we need to go ahead and replace this so went and picked up a new 30 to 50 psi pressure switch and we're going to replace this one so i thought we'd bring you along on that Okay, first thing we need to do is shut off power coming out here to the pump at the panel. Go ahead and I'm gonna hit the switch just to be sure. And also once we turn it back on that we can turn this, hit the power here. And then we've just unscrewed the, the lines coming in. These are the 10 gauge wire that's feeding in here. So we've undone these and we're gonna have to feed them back out. And then we have to undo these contacts that are coming out of the motor itself as well as the grounds. Okay, we've got all our wires disconnected on the switch. Now we need to get this locking ring off here. Just take a flathead screwdriver and you can take side cutters or a hammer and just tap on this until it spins, until it spins freely. And you should be able to Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now we just need to take this off of here and put it onto the new unit and then reverse this process. Okay, so once you get this pressure switch off the bottom of this, obviously it's got a lot of water in it and pressure from the tank, so it's back flowing pressure coming out of the unit. So just let it let it run out of pressure until there's no more water in the line. So we're gonna just put some pipe thread sealant on here. Plumber's putty as it's known. So just put this around here and then we're gonna twist this back on. It's probably gonna cross thread, unfortunately, my guess, because of the way, hopefully not, but Maybe we got it on the threads good. So we just twist this back on until it's tight. And then we're gonna feed this back through. Set it on here, put our locking ring back on here. And then it's just a reversing of the process with a screwdriver of hitting this back on here to hold it in place. So we're gonna replace these wires coming out of the motor itself onto these first two contacts. And you can see if you look closely here that they are set just a little bit lower than these outer two. Just a matter of setting these on here. And the hardest part is probably having fat fingers and trying to get these screws down in here in between these plastic dividers. Okay, now we're connected back to the motor. So now we just have to bring our supply, the wire supply wire back through here and reconnect these, the ground and the hot and neutral. Okay, we got all of our wires hooked back up and connected. Ground wire connected down here. The wires are for the most part bent out of the way so that we can get the cover on and then this nut goes on that post. One last thing to check, that is a 30 to 50 PSI pressure switch. Need to check and make sure that the pressure, air pressure in this tank is two pounds below the cut in pressure. So since it's 30 pounds, this should read 28 PSI. So that's what we need it to read. So it does. All right, we're gonna go turn on the breaker, test it, see if it works. And hopefully we have no more short cycling. Uh, 
as you can see, it works. It's up and running. It's not short cycling anymore, but can you believe that we hooked it up and turned it on? There must have been some pressure differential between the factory setting, which was supposed to be 30 to 50, and our setup here. So it ultimately needed to be have the these nuts right here you turn these clockwise to increase the cut in and cut off pressure so we did about it took about 12 quarter turns to get it to where it would not short cycle the contacts where they were popping like that up against so and in that short of a period of time if you can see that on Isaac if you can really zoom in on those contacts but you can see how quickly those contacts were corroding. So they should be polished metal like on this side and not pitted and starting to, what they're doing is they're starting to, they're just welding each other to each other that the arc, the arc in between those contacts is effectively trying to create a weld and they're spring loaded and popping back and forth apart. So that's what keeps it from doing, from actually connecting. But thankfully, I happened to have a extra set of contacts on hand already and was going to replace them. But before we replace the contacts, I wanted to replace the pressure switch to make sure it wasn't a faulty switch. So now, hopefully, I think we've got this whole system set up where it will run. We won't get any more short cycling or uh, on the well itself or that the contacts are, are making a rapid on and off and arcing. Whew, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. God bless.